so I wanted to, first of all, uh, thank you for coming up and welcoming you to, to Montreal. It's a little hot and humid. I wish I could wear my shorts like some of you guys, but <laughs> having some sort of official role, I guess I shouldn't have. Um, so I just want to introduce Robert. So f for this day and a half, um, I'm not even sure how we could call this a workshop or a discussion or whatever it is. Uh, we've asked Robert to come in and kind of be the uh, maître de cérémonie for the whole uh, the whole thing. Um, so Robert, I'm not going to read you his bio, but uh, if you look in the, the little handout, I think that might have been given to you. Robert has a long history of helping groups like this try to get organized uh, and come up with some sort of plan and vision, and eventually lobby the powers that be to give us some money to get some research going. Um, so. I'm not going to talk any more than this because I have a 10 minutes left after this, but I'll hand you over to Robert. Thank you, Vincent, and um, welcome everybody uh, to Montreal if you're from further afield. Who, who here is from outside of Montreal? Just a show of hands. Excellent. Excellent. Um, so, we are just a couple of minutes late starting off. Uh, I'll be talking to you at various times over the next day and a half, so uh, I'm, I'll cut, keep things short at the moment. Um, yes, eventually I want to try and uh, make sure that this becomes a very well-funded field, but in the short term I want to make sure that you know where the exits and the washrooms are. <laughs> so the, uh, everything is out the doors to the left and, and then you take a right. Um, the, there is a Wi-Fi um, for, that is the IBS Wi-Fi. I don't know if you're already logged on to that. It's um, cap, all caps, IBS MTL 2018. And it seems that if you fill that in for the password as well, it's, it's the same as the network name and, and that will work. Um, just, this, did you take my... Uh, Thank you. Okay, um, yeah, so as you see, we've got a day and a half here, and the, the, it's broken up into three pieces. And I think today, this afternoon you're going to get some very um, interesting presentations. And, and the importance of this is that we've got people talking to you to you who are absolutely on the leading edge and have a broad vision of what's happening in the synthetic biology space. And it's important we all, what I call a blue, blueprint to that vision. So if everybody gets the same idea of what we're talking about with the same vocabulary at the same time, it makes moving forward as a group a lot easier. So I'm, I think it's going to be a very interesting afternoon. Um, tomorrow we're going to hear from a lot of you about what you're doing. So it's a, it's a sharing because we are a big country and you don't always know what everybody's doing across, across the country. And, and then tomorrow afternoon we're going to really get down to some real issues as to what as a community we, we need, we want, where we're going. Um, and, and I think that's the, the real work part of, of the workshop. So that's, that's my very brief overview to you. Um, my, I view what I do as um, really facilitating ecosystems coming together. And uh, this is a very important part of a synthetic biology ecosystem for Canada uh, coming together. And uh, GP Wright, uh, as you will hear from Vincent next, um, is, a, is a mechanism by, by which that is going to happen. So with that, um, I think most of you, most of you know Vincent, but just in case, I'm going <laughs> to do a uh, do a read his brief bio. Um, he is a professor of biology at Concordia University here in Montreal. Uh, he held the Canada Research Chair in Microbial Geno Genomics and Engineering from 2004 to 14. Currently holds the Concordia University Research Chair in Microbial Engineering and Synthetic Biology and in 2012 established and is now co-director of the Concordia Center for Applied Synthetic Biology, the Genome Foundry, which is a unique CFI-funded technology platform uh, that aspires to accelerate and um, 
design build test cycle of biological engineering. Uh, BSc from here at McGill, MSc from Guelph, PhD from UBC, um, and is elected to the Royal Society of Canada. Um, one thing I did realize I, I forgot, you, you will see that we are being uh, videoed over in the corner. Um, it's just the speakers who are going to be videoed. Uh, and of course the questions will come into the, into the video as well. Uh, the video is our record for the meeting. We will not um, publicly release videos without the permission of the speaker, but obviously we can't do it for all of the people asking questions. So if you do think you're about to ask a question which is sensitive from the perspective of your research stuff, you might want to mention it before and we'll figure out how not to record you giving away your Nobel Prize opportunity. Um, yeah, so with that, Vincent, please. So I just want to take uh, five, seven, eight, nine, ten minutes to kind of uh, set the stage a little bit as to uh, why we're here and what we're trying to get accomplished out of this meeting. Uh, bef but before I do that, I wanted to start off with thanking uh, those who gave money to support this meeting. So Concordia University contributed some money to this. Genome Quebec has been a lot of help in, in putting this meeting together, Ontario Genomics and the NRC. The NRC, so this meeting is happening today and now because it's in parallel. Uh, with the IBS meeting uh, organized by the NRC, and they've donated audiovisual and room and everything else. So that's a that's a big plus for us. So why are we here? Um, in case you haven't heard, back in 2016, uh, a group of people, and we have one of those here, uh, Andrew Hessel, out in uh, in the U.S., uh, decided to launch a project or a program called GP Right, Genome Project Right. And really, the, this, that's the, really the flip side, and you're gonna hear a lot more about it from Andrew in a minute, but that's really the flip side of the GP read, which was all about sequencing genomes. Um, I hijacked a little bit of text there, and I think that's important. Oops, it hasn't moved forward. This is great, it moves forward in one screen, but not the other one. So I highlighted some text here, and I think, I think it's pretty important. So one, one of the things that we're trying to do is uh, is become a part and contribute to the GP right program, uh, which is building out to be an international uh, uh, consortium. So if we're going to do that, if we're going to play uh, with the GP right community, I think we have to have a pretty good understanding of what the goals and objective of the GP right is. So this is right out of their paper, and I think I'll take a second to, to read the text. So the primary goal of HGP right, and by the way, it used to be called the Human Genome Project right to begin with, and there's been a bit, little bit of backtracking. Um, so it's now mostly referred to as a GP right, is to reduce the cost of engineering and testing large genomes and cells, set and cell lines to one thousandth of previous efforts within ten years. So there's a cost here and a size uh, aspect. This will include whole genome engineering of human cell lines and other organisms of agricultural public health significance and, and those needed to interpret human biological function. So, so I think there's a lot to, to think about in, in here, but I think the key points is accelerating, reducing the cost and accelerating our capacity to do large-scale genome engineering. And it's also the fact that we're not only looking at human cell lines, but we're looking at genomes other than human cell lines. So, so I think it's important to keep the goals and the objectives of the genome project right uh, in mind as we progress through the, through the day or so and tomorrow. So where's the opportunity? Why are we here? So this whole thing started in 2016 with, uh, you guys probably picked up the secret meeting, uh, which apparently wasn't secret, but it was so secret I'd never heard about it. It's, we heard about it afterwards when it came out in, a, in an article in Science. And there was a two other follow-up meetings, and, and there was a few of us, actually there's two of us, Bokemil was sitting out here, and myself, who, um, mostly out of curiosity, went to those meetings just to see what it was all about and to see how we could contribute to a potential GP right program. So we attended both the New York meeting and the, and the um, Boston meeting. And as part of those meetings, they asked scientists to get up and kind of give a pitch. What is it that you and or your institute or your country or whatever could contribute to GP right? And Bogomil got up a few times and kind of pitched some ideas. Um, so out of all of this, working group emerged and the working groups have been working since to, to create charters, roadmaps, and and white papers uh, on critical topics. 
and, and Bogomil has been very much involved in this, as you'll see. So what does this thing look like right now? So if you actually look at the GP right website, uh, it claims that the consortium to date includes nearly 200 scientists affiliated with 100 institutions and companies with 15 countries. And you see there's a little dot there on top of Canada. So there's a couple of us that are involved, which made, made us appear in our, in our consortium map. Uh, we, want to, we want to become bigger and more involved in this process. So what can Canada's contribution be, right? So we start thinking about this. So the first problem is a pay-to-pay pay process. So, so the U.S. or other countries are not going to send money to Canada um, to do some of this work. So the first thing we have to think about is uh, if we're going to do any kind of science in this area, where is our money going to come from? That's the first thing I think of, actually, before I even think of the science. So it's a pay-to-pay -pay program. So where is the money going to come from? Uh, the other thing, too, that was pretty obvious, and after discussing with a lot of people at GP right, is, is they kind of recommend it to lead with the application. What, what do you want to do? What's the outcome of your GP right project? What problems are you going to solve? What issues are you going to, are you, are you going to address? I think we have two things that's really going well for us in Canada right now. So we have excellence in genomics. We have a lot of powerful, well-funded genomics program. And we have a pretty big, solid star history of systems biology. And to me, I think those are, those are two really key aspects that will be really important as we move forward into a GP right program. Um, but at the same time, I think the opportunity is SynBio and, and synthetic genomics, which is, I guess, a, a side or central discipline to synthetic biology, is really, really becoming uh, emerging rapidly in Canada and across, across the globe. So I think these are opportunities that we shouldn't uh, uh, dismiss and jump on here pretty quickly. Um, and of course, I have to spend a few minutes pitching. So we're, we're in the process of establishing the Genome Foundry at Concordia. And one of the reasons, or one of my personal motivation for doing this is to actually uh, give us the capacity to start building genomes and modifying genomes on a large scale. So it's all about automation and robotics. Um, and we're hoping that this platform can contribute eventually to a, to a GP right program. <clears throat> so as I was reaching out to several of you to come to this meeting, um, I was asked several times, like, what is, what is it that you're trying to get out of this and, and what do you want to do? So I thought that instead of completely leaving out there and kind of going, this, this group of people is going to self-organize into some logical structure, I thought I would start off with maybe putting initial idea and structure on the table and see if that flies, at least uh, a bone that we can put meat around. Um, so we have a diverse enough group of people in this room in Canada that, that it would be maybe difficult to go after a single application. Um, so my thought would be that we probably go after two different applications, one on the health side I mean, one on the environment slash agriculture side. And, and I think that most people, if not everyone in that room, can probably uh, identify themselves to some of these, one of these two streams. So <clears throat> um, I think that would be pretty important to, to from, the, from the beginning, at least have a little bit of an idea of focus as to where we want to go. And the two, uh, I think, really important aspects is, is gels. Um, I think gels are going to have a pretty, pretty big play, role to play in, in, this, in this opportunity. And technology. If I actually look at the goals of the GP right that I showed at the beginning, most of it seems to be technology driven, um, and, and and I think that's probably a right place to put it. Um, you probably want to spend a lot of time developing technology at the front end. It's really going to accelerate your science at the back end. Um, so technology and gels would probably be two important streams as well uh, to a GP right program. Now, whether or not we have different projects, independent projects, whether we have one or two projects, whether we have a big consortium uh, overseeing projects, I have uh, no preconceived uh, choices on this. But I think that one of the things that we really have to think about as we move forward is, is what is the mechanism by which we're gonna get this funded? And I think that's gonna have a lot to do with how we wanna structure a potential GP right Canada program. <coughs> So, what are the outcomes from this meeting? What, what, what should you and should we all be expecting from this? I think there's some broad outcomes here. I, I look at this meeting as, as the first step into, into uh, a larger, bigger process. Uh, the first one is really to determine if there's an appetite for establishing a GP right Canada consortium. So, so Bogomil and I call this meeting with the, with the initial idea that there'd be a large enough community 
and enough people interested to do this. Uh, so it's kind of testing the waters, and if that community doesn't come together, or a lot of students coming together, then it's fine. We should just choose to walk away and not waste too, too much time on this. But if we do decide that this is something valuable and we want to pursue it, we should, we should determine that pretty early on. Uh, once we get past that step, I think um, the beginning of an outline of what a structure would look like uh, as a two projects, as a one project, what's the focus, what's the health focus, what's the environment focus. I think, I think it'll be pretty important to do that fairly early on. I don't want to be critical, but Andrew will probably back me up on this. One of the problems that the GP Wright program has had in the U.S. is, is a lack of focus. Um, the discussion has gone back and forth between uh, sticking only the mammalian cell lines to, to doing every other organism. So I think that we have to be a little careful here to early on make some choices, maybe some difficult, tough choices, but at least bring a focus uh, to the process so we can get to something um, quickly. I think identifying potential leaders, those will hopefully self-emerge, uh, won't have to twist arms. I think that would be interesting and important to do this at this meeting. Uh, and beginning, beginning to identify what the objectives would be for various streams. I think and it, it's kind of interesting because I, to me I have like this angel and devil on, on each shoulder. I, I want this to be a science-driven process. I want science to be the, the driving factor. But I also realize that there's a lot of politics at play here. Um, and if we're going to get our science funded, we're going to have to somehow play, play the political game. Um, so it's kind of a, let's talk science as much as we can, but also keep in mind that if it's going to get funded, we're going to have to, to go beyond that. So in comfort, maybe. And then beyond this meeting, and again, I'm not a big guy for pushing administrative and bureaucratic processes, but I think in the end, we're going to have to come up with a document, whether you want to write it a vision paper or a white paper or a proposal, whatever it is, and the reason is that, and I've been pushing this field long enough to, to be able to tell you this, that if you go to the funding agencies and you ask them to, to invest in this area, they need a story, they need, they need a document, they need something concrete. What I hear all the time is, sure, we'll fund it, what are you going to do? How much money do you need? Right? That's the two things you get most of the time. So I think that we have to, whether we like it or not, we're going to have to come up with some sort of document that will spell out very clearly what a GP right Canada would do and how much money it would actually take to do that. Um, but of course, we'll let the science and the scientists decide on that. So that's all I had um, as an introduction. Um, hopefully, it gives you an idea as to why we call this meeting, uh, why you, most of you are here. I think I reached out to most of you people to, to be present at this meeting, and what the outcome and the goals and the objectives of the meeting is. I think that's pretty important um, from the get-go. Are there any questions? To start off, your comments. So we'll just pack our things and leave and go to the closest pub or. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Actually, uh, one question where do you envisage uh, to which agencies we should go? Should we go to Genome Canada or we are going to kind of pre cancel whatever? Because pre cancel was not really very responsive to these kind of things and, and etc. And having in mind that we had some European projects which were promised to be funded uh, if Canadian partners actually get money and then when we got money, Canada did not know from which source to fund us uh, and so on. So I think it would be good to have an idea to uh, actually nail down possible uh, agencies which have kind of much broader perspective and who are ready to engage in something like that. Right. So I have some answers, but does anyone have comments on that question? Yeah. We've been getting emails at UBC about this Canada Excellence uh, Research Council that's forming. Is that oh. common knowledge? So there's no confusion of national money into how to spend more national money. I'm not sure exactly. The, it's about a science focus, though, okay. where big funding initiatives should be in the future. Okay. Uh, and that seems like a venue that we should be pursuing yeah. for this type of initiative. But they have an open, right now, they have an open call for comments. This is the reason I'm bringing it up. And I think it's still going on. Okay. So everyone should get online and start commenting on GP Wright or synthetic biology related teams. Canada First Research Excellence Fund. 
account for his future sex in front of I think, to be honest, I think there's many mechanisms and, and, and I've explored and, and poked around a lot of them. Um, at, at the end of the day, and this is why we've roped in people like Robert, and this is why the Genome Centers, so Francis is really instrumental in this, and Bettina and Adoji is really well connected to the ministers in Ottawa. Uh, and uh, so the idea is, to, is for some of these folks to be uh, socializing our, our ideas and our, and our application at the federal level. So I've explored that on Genome Canada's door many times, and the answer that you get is well applied to the, to the competitions that we have. And, and I can tell you that mechanism for what we're talking about here has not worked in the past, and will probably not work in the future. Um, so, so a different process or mechanism has to be put in place. But I, I think this is something that we have, you know, we have a day and a half to, to figure it out. But I think it's a really important question. Um, most likely it's going to be right to, to a minister's desk and industry innovation Canada, something like that. It's not going to be through the funding agencies, traditional funding agencies. And by the way, the GP Wright program in the US has been struggling with the same problems as well. Um, who's going to fund this? Right? So we're not the only ones. <laughs>